Welcome to the restructuring video series with myself, Luke Venner, and Jack Callow. How are you doing, Jack? Very well, Luke. How are you? I'm very good. So we're talking about working capital today? That's correct, yeah. Okay. Um, so what, what actually is working capital, first well, of all? It's a good place to start. Yeah. Um, working capital in its very simplest form, uh, well, the exact definition, shall we say, is current assets, less current liabilities. Current assets being your cash, your stock, Mm -hmm. uh, and, and your debtors uh, in the most uh, common and, and a traditional uh, form and you know, your creditors are you know, your, your short-term creditors due in the next 30 days. And if that position when you take current liabilities away from current assets is a positive position mm -hmm. then you know that's a good sign. Uh, if it's a negative then you do not have enough what we call liquid assets to to settle you know, the, the debts that are that are needing to be paid in in the, the short term so that's kind of why i guess crucially why it's important isn't it? it's about the sort of short term liquidity certainly, certainly from a restructuring perspective it, yeah. you know, it's, it, in many ways it is a it, you know it's a solvency test and it, and it you know it, it gives you that ability to to put a red flag in place mm -hmm. um and and provide you monitor it and this is my fascination with working capital because it's probably one of the most commonly used phrases in business mm. and i always um enjoy um you know when we're looking at buying and selling businesses, that's a really, really good piece of advice to get involved with. And, and working capital comes under the, the microscope, gets screwed because it's the it's the commitment the business has to make mm -hmm. uh, in order to fund you know its operations. You know, if you take working capital out, you know, if you over dividend or you over invest, uh, you you don't have that working capital function within you know, the funding that's required to fund your working capital. Uh, your business will, you know, will will not be able to operate. Um, and when you buy and sell a business, it comes under this huge scrutiny, make sure enough cash is left behind in order to fund that. But I always wonder whether it's then continually monitored mm. post sale going forward, you know, going yeah, forward yeah. because yeah. it's such a huge test. You don't want to over dividend, you know, over, you know take value out beyond what you should and you, and you you don't want to use it for you know investments when it you know, when it's not there to be used. So it's hugely important working mm -hmm. capital, and I, I you know it, it needs continual monitoring and it needs continual focus. And that uh, monitoring is is the management part. That's it's exactly about managing yeah. your working capital and making sure that you've got you know you're looking at your trade for the next sort of three months and beyond. Then you've got enough liquidity, yeah, to fund that trade because it's a cycle, isn't it? You know you've got to buy stock, you've got to pay for your stock. Okay, you might be on terms, but you've got to pay for your stock, and mm -hmm. you might be a manufacturing business, and there's that there's that gap between funding stock, putting it into the production process, funding that production process, getting the the product out to the to the customer, yeah. and then maybe waiting another thirty days or, or or more for the payment sort of thing, and you've got your wages and other costs in the meantime. So, so how does the sort of management management work? So the, work? In every sense of the word, working capital management is a business strategy. You know, it's a choice. Uh, it's something that we would recommend businesses do and look at um, because so it, I mean, it, it has to happen, doesn't it? Well, it, it, it has it, to happen. It does. And um, it, if you've got this number, you know, and the number will change. That's another reason why it's, it's important to be on top of your working capital needs. Um, uh, you know, specifically if you, for example, you wanted to grow the business, or you know, or you are having a particularly difficult time, you know, the, the demand on it will, will will change. But ultimately, it's it's a conscious decision that you're going to look at it. You know, we know that it's current assets, less current liabilities. We know that there's a number, a preferred number. Um, but what is that number, and how do we make sure that we operate at that number? You know, so a negative working capital. Is, is seen as a negative because um, it, you know, it's a red flag for insolvency. If it's positive, great, but if it's too positive, then mm -hmm. you're not efficiently using uh, your resources within your business. So if you've got a number that's constantly going to change, you've got a parameter in which you want to operate at, you need to manage it. You need to look at it regularly, you need yeah. to look at it consistently. And how are you man so you, when you say managing it, you're talking about you know, making sure that your, your trade debtor cycles work, making yeah, sure that you're not paying sort of suppliers too quickly, making sure that you're you're turning your stock into finished product yeah, as, there's, as there's, quickly there's three, as possible. There's three key ratios they look at, work, work, working capital, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the negative positive, but also you're looking at your debtor days because how quickly you're getting your cash in within the terms that you've agreed, but also stock turnover. You know, you don't want stale stock. You want to make sure that you're buying what you need to, to get out the door. You're not over-ordering stock. Mm -hmm. or you're, not, you're, not, you're not missing out on opportunities because you haven't got enough stock in. And you know, if, you, if you keep those metrics in play and you look at them regularly, um, you will manage your work, your working capital well, and you'll spot the opportunities to use that resource more to do something potentially different yeah. in terms of investment. And I think the man the managings. I think you've probably already touched on this, but it's about understanding what that what that cycle looks like. Because yeah. a lot of businesses will see, you know, they'll see 
a sale, but they won't necessarily appreciate the uh, maybe the smaller business. They won't appreciate those those cycles. Yeah. And if you're not on top of those cycles, you're going to have funding requirements. Yeah, yeah. And then you're going to have to start looking at maybe debt or you know equity investment, those sorts of things. So. I think, yeah, working capital is crucial. Um, we see very often working capital challenges and, you know, it's about trying to look at, look at ways to sort of improve that, whether it's about getting decent credit control processes in place, um, whether it be, you know, improving relationships or changing your suppliers, might be around your, your processes and turning, turning your stock into cash, but it is, it's vitally important, isn't it? So Yeah, and we're going to look at that through the series. You know, yeah. we're going to look at every video, we're going to look at how we can make working capital management um, Easy yep. Um, yep. and you know build resilience and robustness into the businesses so that it becomes you know the the prospect of having a working capital issue are yeah, further afield at all at all times. Um, Good, excellent. Thank you, Jack. Thank you, Luke. Some very interesting and important stuff there. If you're interested in watching any further videos from our restructuring team, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thank you very much.